Oops. Oh, shoot. Hmm. Oh, I think we are. Are we going? Can people see stuff? Okay, everybody, somebody type the word, um, let's see, type the word fir, F-I-R, if you can hear me at this moment. <laughs> Hi, Talia. Fur. all right, so we are actually live. Thank you so much. It is only 104, so actually four minutes of awkwardness. <laughs> okay, everybody's typing fur. Um, thank you. Um, thank you. So four minutes late. Apologies for that, but um, this is this is sort of the purpose of this particular live stream is to, to work out these kinks. Um, I, I don't know. I can't explain the, the lag. Um, yes, Marg is saying it would be good to know how you fix it. I agree. <laughs> it would be good. I don't know what happened. It just it just started working. Um, so some lag is anticipated. That was that was four minutes of lag. So this is good. This is really good. I'm going to start the live stream a little bit earlier. Um, but let's begin. So my name is Sarah Bell, um, and I am a cartographer and a data viz designer, but I do a lot of graphic design as well sometimes. Um, and today we're going to be talking about textures with transparency masks in Adobe Illustrator. <clears throat> transparency masks or opacity masks. I think the official word in Illustrator is opacity mask, but um, everybody is kind of familiar with how transparency and opacity are inextricably linked. <clears throat> So I'm going to share this trick that I like to use sometimes on my maps and designs. And that method is, um, is what I just described to you. And this is my very first live stream. I think that that is, that is clear for everybody watching. So your patience is really appreciated because I'm 100% certain to continue to gracefully stumble through this presentation. And this presentation is actually, um, I hope that um, some people either, you know, uh, get to say hi or learn a little bit of stuff, but also um, th another purpose of this is to practice for uh, the How to Do Map Stuff live streaming event hosted by cartographer Daniel Huffman, who is in the chat room. Um, and Daniel spun up this event as a great way to have a knowledge sharing event during this time of social distancing. Uh, there's going to be over two dozen mappers in this event um, sharing their range, uh, sharing their tips, <clears throat> excuse me, which range from Python scripting to thematic mapping to aesthetic design and even cross-stitch mapping. And I'm really excited about it and I wanted to be a part of it, but I have never, so I've live streamed before, but only as the presenter. I've never also <laughs> dealt with the audio visual part of it. So I wanted to work out those kinks. So this event is global and, he, and it, so the dates are gonna vary based on where you live, but it's this week on Wednesday, April 29th or April 30th, depending on your time zone. And you can learn more about it here at somethingaboutmaps.wordpress.com. So when I say images as opacity masks, what exactly do I mean? <clears throat> well, here's uh, many cartographers like myself enjoy bringing their maps from a GIS analytical software after they've done all the spatial analysis into a vector graphics editor program like Adobe Illustrator to do some finishing touches on them. For example, <clears throat> I made this Red River Gorge map and I wanted it to have sort of a National Park Service feel, and I accomplished that aesthetic in Illustrator. This one doesn't use any images as opacity masks, though. Here's a map that uses a lot of images as opacity masks. This is a totally different type of map. Um, I made this, um, so it, it, it shows Thrillist.com's top 31 donut shops from 2018. And I wanted to create a sort of mid-century diner feel with this design, and I use a bunch of different images to do that. Um, so let's just, you know, I want it, it has a little bit of tactility. So let's just see what I did. There's this, there's this countertop in the background. I took a picture of, I think, wax paper and up to, up to the contrast. 
so it could really get some texture in that um, sort of old-fashioned looking countertop. I took a picture of wax paper to put it into this vector um, artwork uh, to make this wax paper look like wax paper. I took a picture of, I think, paper towel for this newspaper and a picture of bread for this cake donut. And that's kind of what I'm talking about when I'm referring to images as, um, yeah, wax paper is wax paper. Um, so I, I, it's hard to not like look at the chat and like say hi to everybody, but hi everybody. And I'm really glad you're here. Um, in a way I was like, I hope nobody shows up so I could like say I announced it and just practice on my own. But I'm ultimately glad that you are all here. So thank you. Um, here's another example um, that uses a picture of drawing paper. Um, this is a sort of a work in progress. Um, and it has, it, when I use that image in this vector artwork, it kind of gives it sort of a, a heavy cardstock, almost like a postcard feel. Um, you, it looks like um, a picture of a map rather than just some vectors. And finally, here's this one. Um, this is not a map, really. Uh, I made this particular design to demonstrate the regular style of a font that I made called Bell Topo Sans. It's a free font. You can download it from my website. And this is the one I'm going to demonstrate in this video. So let's go over to Illustrator. Ding, 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 ding. Boom. All right, here we are. I'm going to control zero. I hope to eventually have some sort of software that shows the shortcuts that I'm using. I'll try to remember to call them out as I do them right now. Um, so here we are in Adobe Illustrator. And it's the design before the opacity masks were added. And I created this college ruled paper um, with these horizontal blue lines evenly spaced and this vertical pink line. And it, it's fine. It's, it looks a little flat to me, though. And also because college ruled paper is so common, um, it doesn't really stand out. And I wanted people to see this and then look at it further because I didn't want them to see this college ruled, ruled paper. I wanted them to look at the characters to see if it was the type of font they might want to use in their maps or their design. And so, um, so yeah, uh, it's not that interesting. Um, I wanted to add a little bit more character to it by making it look like a paper. So how do you make vector artwork look like paper in Illustrator? Well, I took this picture of drawing paper that I mentioned before um, with my iPhone. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's not the greatest picture of paper. It's a sketch pad. So the paper itself uh, is, is a little has a little bit of texture. That's why I wanted to take a picture of this particular paper. I didn't want it to be too smooth. Um, that'll make sense in a little bit. Um, and it's it's kind of yellow because the paper is yellow, but also because I took it in my home office. And the light bulbs have sort of a yellowish um, hue to them. So in order to make this, so I'm going to describe opacity masks in Illustrator how I understand them. And what's wonderful about Illustrator is there's many different ways to crack a nut. Um, and I might not describe this fully, but here, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to describe it like this. Opacity masks in Illustrator work by adding transparency to the underlying objects, so the vector artwork in my case, where the masks, so this picture of a paper, are lighter, um, and it, add, it keeps things more opaque in the underlying objects where the mask is, I mean, sorry, where the mask is darker, it's going to add more transparency. Where the mask is lighter, it's going to add less transparency. So um, I, I added a little bit of filter to this in Photoshop. This is the same picture now. I upped the brightness, so the are uh, yeah, so the so the whites are a little bit um, brighter. Uh, I upped the the contrast, so the difference between the lights and darks are a lot greater. And I totally desaturated it because I didn't really want to, um, I wanted to edit the color in Illustrator essentially. So it's completely black and white. And it's a huge image. So what I could do is I could control A or command for you Mac folks, control C and copy it, go back to Illustrator. I'm going to expand my layers panel and zoom out a little by control minusing. I'm doing the zoom trick by control shift or spacebar. And I could just paste it. 
Control V, paste it right there. Um, and it's a little grungy looking. If I zoom out a little, Control minus, um, it's, it's, um, it's kind of giant. It's way bigger than my arc board. What's cool is you can actually um, sort of transform images without them looking too funky when you transform them down in Illustrator. Um, so I'm going to do that, place it where I want, zoom in, and I have some texture because I have that, that image, that highly contrasted image of paper. Um, now, one thing that I could do and um, I have done, and it's totally cool to do this, is just put a picture or a, a rectangle on top of it. It's a 1920 by 1080 pixel size artboard. So, oh, that was so close, 1081. And I'm gonna make sure that it's fully centered in my artboard. So I go to this little icon, make sure it's aligning to the artboard, center horizontally, center vertically. And now I know it's exactly covering my entire artboard. Great. I could give it a little bit of opacity up here. So it's, I mean, transparency, so it's see-through. Maybe not too much. And then I'll zoom in. And I'll stop for a moment because I know when you zoom, maybe it, the, um, the quality on a live stream goes away a little bit. So there's some texture there. Zoom out to full screen. Now if I were to save this and print it or put it in Photoshop or open it in Photoshop, um, this part would be cropped, anything outside of the artboard. And that could be what I wanted to do. But I wanted to do something a little different. So I'm going to put the opacity back to 100 here, and I'm going to change the color to sort of a bluish gray because, you know, when paper is really super white, if you can remember back to when you were using a lot of, writing a lot of notes back in the 90s, <laughs> um, when we all used paper, some paper is actually has a bluish hint to it or a yellowish hint, but some of it's blue. Um, so I'm going to make it a little bit blue and I'm going to put this image as an opacity mask on that vector rectangle that I just drew. So I'm going to select this image and put it in my clipboard by just control copying it. And now I'm going to delete it. And to apply opacity masks, this is how I do it. Again, so many different ways to do amazing things in Illustrator. Um, this is one way that I do opacity masks. So I select the artwork and I have this transparency window open. This is why it's confusing in Illustrator. They're called opacity masks, but it's in the transparency window. So if you are unfamiliar with that window, you just go to Window, Transparency, and you'll open it. So you select the artwork you want to apply it to. And if you wanted to apply this to more than one piece of artwork, they have to be grouped. You can't just select them all. You have to group them before selecting them. So I have it selected. And now this is how I make masks. Um, there hasn't been some chat for a little while, uh, which is great, you know, means you're listening, but also I want to make sure you guys can still hear me. So um, if anybody wants to type in the word cedar, um, just to make sure that you can hear me. Yeah, all right, awesome. <laughs> Sweet, thank you, thank you all. All right, so I have this artwork selected and I'm gonna click make mask. And so what's gonna happen as soon as I click make, <laughs> make mask is um, it's going to make this disappear. It's not gonna go away, but you're not just not going to see it. And I'll describe why as soon as I click make mask. So boom, it's gone. And the reason why is you see this window right here, this is the opacity mask window and it's 100% black in this preview. And what that means is that 100% of this is going to be transparent. So I need to paste that image in this opacity mask window. So I select that window and I still have that image on my clipboard and I want to paste it in the exact same place that I copied it from. So I'm not going to just control V and paste it. I'm going to control F, which will paste it in exactly the place that I copied it from. Um, so control F, and there it is. And now I have an opacity mask. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit um, just so you can see the texture. And I'm going to full screen it again. And let me describe what's going on. Um, I'm actually 
I'm going to go back here and make it a little darker just so you can see it a little bit better because I know on live streams things are already a little fuzzy uh, and not as crisp. So I have, go back to this, um, this opacity mask and you can see a preview of the image. Down here is where it was really super dark and up here is where it was kind of bright. So down here is where most of the transparency is happening and up here most of that blue vector is shining through. I actually want to invert this to totally reverse what's going on here. So I invert that and that is kind of going a little bit more for the look that I wanted to do. And one last, not one last, but one more little trick with opacity masks is when I started working with these, I got really frustrated. I applied this, I saw what I wanted, and I got excited, and then I wanted to go ahead and work on my other vectors in, in my um, design. So I'd like click around, and I couldn't do it, so I was looking up here for breadcrumbs, and what you actually have to do is you're, you're in this opacity mask window. You have to uh, click to stop editing opacity masks, so click the artwork that you're actually applying the mask to. So boom. Now you can start interacting with all of the rest of your artwork. So I'm gonna turn that off and here's those papers that I applied it to. I'm gonna show you one last thing before saying goodbye. Um, do turn off everything except my world hill shade elevation. So this is a hill shade. Um, and a hill shade is just, it shows the physiologic, or physical terrain, physiological, <laughs> phys physical, um, terrain of earth and if I'm going to select that and so this is southeast Alaska it's not like the world's greatest hill shade but it's totally great for the purpose of this particular design if I copy it it's on my clipboard and now I'm going to um, because this font turn on this is I made it for the use of maps, I wanted to give it a little bit of a mappy feel, um, which is why I wanted to kind of burn a little bit of an insinuation of the hillshade. So I'm gonna draw, sometimes I really love lavender. A little bit of hint of lavender can really, um, really be nice sometimes. So I will draw this lavender rectangle. There are so many different ways while I'm drawing this just to let you know that I use opacity masks and images in them. This is just one. Um, and I, I find it to be approachable and fun and very useful. So I, I'm going to go to Make Mask. So I have this artwork selected. I click Make Mask, and now it's gone because I don't have any mask in there. And I go to the opacity mask window. And Control F is going to paste that in hillshade exactly where I copied it from. Um, and there it is, it's inverted because all of the dark uh, southern and eastern slopes are now transparent and all that lavender is showing through where everything um, is lighter. I wanna invert this again so that it looks like a real hill shade and that's what I'm going for. All right, so uh, I'm going to turn on the final design. There we go. And now you see that hill shade there, a little bit of insinuation of a map. It's a paper, but it's not flat. And that's, that's one way that I like to use opacity masks. So um, thank you so much for coming to my very first live stream event and your patience with the, the, the stuff at the beginning. Uh, I appreciate that as well. Um, I guess I don't know how this works. Do you stay for questions or you just try to stop streaming? Um, you're welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Well, if you do have any questions, um, I guess reach out in Twitter or whatever. But um, anyways, you all uh, have a great day. Thanks. I'm going to figure out how to stop streaming now. Thank you all. You're welcome.